Friday night and cancer. They go together like, well, cancer and anything. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of 50-50. Hey, Sally. What, what's going on? Um, she's probably having a nervous breakdown. What are your chances? It said 50-50. It's not that bad. You were a casino game. You'd have the best odds. Everybody's got a little. You really think that a girl's gonna go for me just because I have cancer? For the millionth time, yes! I have cancer. I was wrong. Nice it was, it was weird. It's yeah. weird like that. No, that's it's not, too it, soon. it doesn't sound cool. At its heart, this movie is awards bait. Hipster awards bait, sure, but awards bait nevertheless. And it's a smart move for co-star Seth Rogen, who also produces alongside his business partner Evan Goldberg, to try and add some dimension and weight to his Hollywood persona. But while many comedians eventually go Pagliacci, it doesn't always work out. As for Rogan, he's playing it safe. Instead of taking on the lead role of a young man who is diagnosed with cancer himself, Rogan is leaving that to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. While the role was originally going to be played by James McAvoy, Gordon-Levitt is a respected actor with a cult following, and one who has also already dipped a toe in the awards game thanks to his Golden Globe nomination for 500 Days of Summer. 50-50 also stars Anna Kendrick, who herself is known on the award circuit after receiving several nominations for her supporting turn in Up in the Air. For even more awards heft, the film also stars critical darlings Angelica Houston and Philip Baker Hall, and is based on the real-life cancer diagnosis of its screenwriter, Will Reiser. But on the other hand, this still has shades of a Seth Rogen movie, with him playing, well, Seth Rogen, but in a really sad situation. Think super bad, but with cancer. And maybe cancer needs the exposure. It's not something that just happens to kids and the elderly, which most people don't understand, is evidenced by the current trend of 20s and 30-somethings who forego life insurance and doctor's visits to save a few bucks. But in playing it safe, are Rogan and company their own worst enemy? If they're taking a low-key approach to 50-50, will audiences do the same, especially with the tough subject matter? The similar in tone 500 Days of Summer didn't fare too well at the box office, and that was just about having your heart broken. Furthermore, Rogan hasn't been doing so well at the box office himself these days. Making a movie like 50-50 might be a great idea, but did he bungle it? Let's go find out. So I'm here with Jameson and Coco, and Jameson is a BTT viewer. Big fan. Oh, yay, and he just got out of 50-50. Loved it. Oh, you loved it? I really liked yeah? it. Yeah? How did you like it? I liked it. Was this movie a bummer? Not at all. No? Thought it was great. No, actually it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't? Oh, no. okay. I thought it was quite uplifting. No, of course not. It's about cancer. Yeah, but it's a comedy. I thought the story was strong. And yeah? Well, for everybody that's going to see it, it's definitely not a... Um, full-on comedy. It was just a little bit different from what I expected. I thought it'd be a little funnier. I loved the movie, though. I mean, oh, you it did? Had, yeah, yeah, it did. It had its moments. It was entertaining. It was informative. And I just thought it was, it was a great screenplay and great acting. Well, what made you go and see it? Why were you like, I'm going to see this movie? The cast. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they Definitely. live up to expectations? Definitely. I'll admit I did go see it because of the actors. I really enjoy both of the main actor's work, and yeah. I also enjoy Angelica Houston. Whose movie is it? Joseph Gordon-Levitt's or Seth Rogen's? Mm, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah really? Yeah. Oh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah, really? It's definitely Ooh. his movie. Seth Rogen is not in it as much. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah? He's, he's very much of a supporting role in this. I guess what Seth Set, yeah? yeah. He just talks about normal stuff and he puts a spin on it, his delivery. It's like a Seinfeld. His delivery is just perfect. So did it make you think more about the disease? I mean, do you think you got a new understanding and appreciation for it or? Um, more than I would than I would have thought, yeah. It made me think about cancer, you know. It, it's it's terrible, but it's it's part of life and you have to deal with it. It gave me, I would say, not an understanding of the disease itself, but a better understanding of how people who have the disease deal with it. It definitely showed how hard it was to go through. And I've never actually seen the chemotherapy thing. They actually oh. showed- Oh, they did? Yeah, I've ah. never seen it before. I've just heard people go through it. I've never seen the chemotherapy sessions and the machines and all of that. So that's, Ooh. it presented that aspect. What would you say to somebody who was like, ah, movies are supposed to be fun. I don't want to see a cancer movie. <laughs> I think it is fun. Is, I actually oh, think it is time? fun. Yeah, I really did. I mean, yeah. cried a little bit, but... Uh, well, <laughs> um, it is a movie about cancer. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I thought it was a great movie. It's a comedy. You, you, it's 95% laughing, 5% emotional. I bet you when you go see this, you'll love it. What would you give this movie on a 1 to 10? I give it a, about an 8. A 7. I give it a 7 and a half. I, oh, okay. What do you give it? 7. I give it a 10. I would give it a 9. I'd definitely give it a strong 9. So it sounds like you'll cry, but mostly laugh, as audiences overall give 50-50 on 8. I'm Grace Randolph, reporting from Regal Ewok.